Hey, Mal Reed, ready to play a golf hole? Yeah, let's do it. All right, Mal, we've got par four, 429 yards. Little dog leg right. What's the most nervous you've ever been on a tee in your entire career? I mean, I think it's good to have nerves. Like, I obviously get nervous before tournaments, but like, nerves is good, it means that you care. But I guess I think my first ever Solheim Cup, like that first tee shot, the fact I even, I mean, I did barely make contact, but the fact I even made contact was pretty surprising. But that's probably the most nervous I've ever been. Like, I struggled to put the ball on the tee. Well, this should be the least nervous, I think, of your tee shots. Let's <laughs> see you find that fairway. Beauty. Oh, carry the bunker, no problem. All right, oh, no, so you, you give me a bad yardage there. <laughs> you go by Mel. Yep. Does anyone get to call you Melissa? Does anyone still call you Melissa? Um, occasionally, like my dad will. Usually, it's a, if it's serious conversation or I'm in trouble. Um, but no, more people call me Melanie. I'm like, dude, that's not my name. But yeah, no, it's definitely just Mel. All right, what are the top three golf courses on your bucket list? Um, Cypress Point. Uh, Pebble Beach, and I'd probably have to say Augusta. I was gonna say, just one trip to Monterey, I think you get two of those. <laughs> What's your favorite movie? I'm not a big movie person. Um, favorite movie, I don't know. Honestly, I'm not a big, I'm more of a documentary girl. I'm not a huge movie person. I mean, Gladiator is always kind of stuck in my head, but okay. yeah, no. What was the last documentary that really stuck with you? Um, I like murder documentaries, which is a bit dark, but <laughs> um, Unsolved Mysteries is probably the last one that I watched. All right, last movie question. Which actress would you want playing oh, you... Mel Reed in a it's movie? It's so, so weird. You asked, my friend was over last night and asked me, I don't know. Um, I think when I was 20 years old, I asked that question. I said Cameron Diaz, so I'm just going to have to go with Cameron Diaz. It. Uh, all right, so standing on the 18th tee, final round, in Jersey, ShopRite Classic, you had just made bogey. Uh -huh. What's going through your head? Um, not a lot really, like my caddy Des um, kind of let me know the situation on the tee. So I knew that if I birded that hole, I pretty much had it in the bag. So um, yeah, honestly, I was feeling pretty calm. Like it was probably the most calm I'd been all, like all day. And yeah, I was honestly fine. I felt pretty good about the way I was hitting it. And so, yeah, I felt pretty good. And you made birdie. How did you celebrate the victory that night? <laughs> uh, typical British way, found the pub next to the 18th hole called McGettigan's, which is one of the best pubs on tour. And the guy was awesome, shut it down for us. And we filled the trophy up with as much alcohol as possible. What and was the drink of choice? Uh, I think we drank Yingling. It was just easy to fill it with. So um, yeah, no, it was a good celebration. I got in trouble for it, but it was worth every penny. Are you a big shopper? Um, occasionally, yeah. I kind of buy the same stuff though, like... Where do you do most of your shopping? Online, for sure. I hate, like, going shopping, so... What was um, the last thing you bought online? I just bought a pair of jeans from Topshop, which is a, like, UK, like, my favorite shop, so... Yeah, just bought a pair of jeans. Are you superstitious in any way? I use the same marker. I use a 1950s American Quarter, heads up. Uh, that's probably the only superstitious thing that I do. What's your reasoning behind that? Uh, my mum was born in 1950 and I've always used the quarter since I can remember, so yeah, and I heard that Tiger had it heads up, so I thought why not do that. If you are a 10 out of 10 as a golfer, <laughs> what are you out of 10 as a snowboarder? Um, my friends are good. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to be a pro snowboarder, so I used to be pretty good. Um, I'm probably a solid 8, 8 out of 10. I can do most things. Do you have any trips planned for this winter? Yeah, I think we're going to try and go in February at some point. Um, not sure yet. I've never been in America, so I'm hoping to go to kind of Colorado or somewhere like that. Um, yeah, we're just planning it right now, actually. What is your favorite annual stop on the LPGA Tour? Um, I mean, it's got to be British Open. You know, going back home and playing these things golf courses, I think it's pretty sick. And it's my favorite kind of golf. And so, yeah, it would definitely be British Open. All right, we've got 154 mm -hmm. to the pin. So what's your club? Um, I mean, it's kind of in between for me. I hit my A time like 150, uh, 152, and then I hit my seven like 160, 162. So it's, it feels kind of into a little bit. So I'll probably just take a little bit off a of seven just to make sure it gets there. Looks like there's a little backstop up there. Yeah, it looks like it. Um, so yeah, I'll just take a little bit off a of seven, make it more like a 150, 58 club or something. All right, here's a tough question. You're currently 33. When you were, what would you tell your 18 year old self? Um, I mean, I was pretty good at 18 years old. Um, 
I don't know really, I guess just, I wish I would have listened to my instinct a lot more um, in my career and you know, you get so much advice from people and they mean well and you kind of take it all in, but I wish that I'd have been strong enough to have listened to my instinct a little bit more and what I needed and been a bit stronger in that sense. And so that's probably what I would tell my 18 year old self. All right, let's see that seven iron. Right at it. Yeah, a bit left, it might be, I might get away with it. Yeah. If we're going to. All right, if you could live off of one food for the rest of your life, what are you eating? <laughs> um, I'm kind of a meat and veg girl, so it would probably be steak. I love steak. So Sounds like Bryson. What's the, uh, what job would you have if you weren't playing professional golf? Um, I would definitely do something in sport. I would have tried to be an athlete in another way. Um, but if not, I mean, I don't know, maybe a broadcaster. I've done a little bit of that and I really enjoy it. And so I would definitely probably have taken that avenue. What did you learn during broadcasting? That I say um a lot and you know. So that was probably the two things that I say a lot. Is there anything that you learned about yourself during quarantine? Um, I get bored very easily. I didn't realize. I was like desperate for time off. And then after about a week, I got very bored. So. I realized that it was really good for me. It kind of let me reset a lot of stuff, but yeah, I definitely get bored easily. Name a pro golfer who you think has great style. It like, looks good on the golf course? Yes. Um, oh, I don't know really. Does Mel Everyone... Reed look good on the golf course? <laughs> I like to think so, I don't know. I like to think so. Um, you know, I think the quarters always look pretty good. Um, the, you know, yeah, I've got to say Jess and Nelly probably. Who's in your dream foursome? I hate this question. Um, honestly, just my, my friends, honestly. Like, I'm not that bothered about playing with other people. Like, it would just be my friends who just want to have a good time. That's probably my favorite football. All right, you do a decent amount of cross-Atlantic flights. If you had to be on one tomorrow with another pro golfer sitting next to you, Who's sitting next to you? Bronte, for sure. Bronte Law. She's a lot of fun. We've All had right. a few transatlantic flights and it's been pretty fun. <laughs> if you had to be a substitute teacher tomorrow, mm -hmm. what subject are you confident that you can teach? Maths. Definitely not English. I can barely spell my own name. So um, yeah, maths definitely my strong suit. Okay. When you end up spending a lot of time in the States, what do you miss most about home? I miss wearing a jacket, honestly, like being in South Florida, it's hot all the time. I miss wearing a jacket, I miss Sunday roasts, and I just miss the country pubs, honestly, it's probably my three biggest things. That actually turned out a bit better than I thought. We're gonna need that putter. <laughs> yeah, it really did. All right, Mel, what do we see in this putt? Um, obviously, you gotta think a little bit about grain in Florida, so the grain is kind of moving left to right. If I was just doing it off my eyes, I would say it's pretty straight. Um, maybe a little bit of head movement, kind of, hair right to left, so I'm gonna hit it pretty straight and slightly downhill, so uh, we'll see if I've read it right, basically. All right, let's see it. Oh, oh. just moved. <laughs> We're I gonna need to see move. that. That's grain, yeah. I'm sorry, we don't give out gimmies on this No, show. it's all okay. Oh, you need to see this one? Yes, oh, I'm this sorry. Is my, uh, <laughs> this is my range right here. We got one more question. All right. Uh, who's the most famous person in your cell phone? Um, probably Rory or Brooks is probably the most famous. Do you get out and play with Rory much? Uh, I've played with him a couple of times. I play with Brooks quite a bit. We're kind of at the same golf club up in here at the Floridian. So I played with him a bunch during uh, COVID, um, kind of when we were home. So that was pretty sweet. And you're taking money off them, right? Occasionally. Occasionally. People tip out of context, only occasionally. <laughs> All right, let's see this. You knew that was good. One last thing, please explain this. Oh, the Melmoji. So I have uh, a guy that makes uh, Winston Collection that makes all my kind of head covers. He's awesome. And my caddy as a joke was like, why don't you just get Melmoji? And I, the amount of stick I get for it is just, I mean, it's worth, it's worth it. I just, yeah, the stick I get for it from other players and stuff is, uh, yeah, they say it's a better looking version of myself, which isn't difficult. So I'm gonna keep it on there for a hey, bit. Well, thanks for making a par with us. I appreciate it, thank you.